A wildfire northwest of Los Angeles burned out of control for a second day Thursday after destroying dozens of homes, but officials said firefighters could get a break with fierce winds expected to subside by evening. More than 10,000 residents remained under evacuation orders as the mountain fire continued to threaten some 3,500 structures in suburban neighborhoods, ranches and agricultural areas around Camarillo in Ventura County. The blaze, which broke out around 9 a.m. Wednesday, had zero containment and the cause was unknown. County fire officials said crews working in steep terrain with support from water-dropping helicopters were focusing on protecting homes on hillsides along the fire's northeast edge near the city of Santa Paula, home to more than 30,000 people. Sharon Boggy said the fire came within 200 feet of her house in Santa Paula. We thought we were going to lose it at 7 o'clock this morning, Boggy said Thursday as white smoke billowed through the neighborhood. She initially fled with her two dogs while her sister and nephew stayed behind. Hours later, the situation seemed better, she said. The National Weather Service said a red flag warning, which indicates conditions for high fire danger, would remain in effect until 6 p.m. Winds were expected to decrease significantly but humidity levels will remain critically low, forecasters said. And tell me about what yesterday was like for you guys. Uh, packing up everything that we really didn't need to take with us. <laughs> Just getting the valuables out. Just getting all the, the valuables Mementos. out and the mementos and, yeah. uh, and watching the fire. Um, thoughts on the day? Feeling better about it? This, we're at the tail end here. Yeah, we, it, we're, it's a, it's a bit better. Yes, until it's all out. And, seven o'clock. We thought we were going to lose yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. We thought we were going to lose it at seven o'clock this morning. So, yeah. I saw there were a bunch of crews working here. Does that give you a little peace of mind? Yes, because I left, because I have two dogs, and my sister and my nephew stayed. And um, there was no support on this side yesterday. Yesterday we had no support, so it was really nice to know that we had support this morning. Yeah, and, and, and we had the air immediately at 7, 7.15. Yeah. So yeah, it was good. Definitely a lot better. <laughs> Around 50 European leaders, including Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and NATO Secretary General Mark Ruta, will be reassessing their transatlantic relations in the hope that the Donald Trump's second U.S. presidency will avoid the strife and political pitfalls of his first administration. Arriving for a summit of European leaders in the Hungarian capital, Budapest, Ruta said he was looking forward to working with Trump again. When he was president, he was the one in NATO who stimulated us to move over the 2% this is very much his doing, his success, he told reporters. He said a major topic at the summit would be the prospect of Russia, 
North Korea, Iran, China working together. We have to work not only the threat of Russia but also the fact that these four countries work together, he said, which would pose a threat to Europe and the US. Further compounding an already complicated situation, Germany, Europe's troubled economic juggernaut, sank into political crisis. After German and Chancellor Olaf Scholz fired his finance minister. It raises the specter of elections in a few months and yet another standoff between the emboldened hard right and the establishment parties in Europe. Ruta said he had confidence in Scholz and Germany's role on the world stage. He said his main concern was the impact of North Korean troops in Russia who he said were deployed in return for Russia supplying North Korea with the newest technological developments. Russia is delivering the latest technology into North Korea in return for North Korean help with the war against Ukraine and that is a threat not only to the European part of NATO but also to the US mainland, he said. At the summit Zelensky is expected to make another plea for more aid as his country fends off Moscow's invasion. The timing is laden with significance as Trump has vowed to end the war, within 24 hours, of being elected, something leaders in Kyiv interpret as an impending evaporation of US support. Hi, good morning. Oh, of course. Uh, I want to congratulate again uh, President Trump uh, upon his re-election. Uh, it was really uh, a huge success for him, including capturing the House and the Senate. I look forward to work with him again. Uh, when he was president, he was the one in NATO who stimulated us to move over the 2%. And now, also thanks to him, and NATO, if you take out the numbers of the US for a moment, is above the 2%. And I think very much that is his doing, his success, and we need to do more. We know this. Um, today, very much on my mind in this meeting is what is happening now with North Koreans being deployed in Russia. And what we see more and more is that North Korea, Iran, uh, China, and of course Russia are working together. Um, working together against Ukraine. But at the same time, Russia has to pay for this. And one of the things they are doing is delivering technology to North Korea, which is now threatening uh, the, in the future the mainland of the US, uh, continental Europe, uh, but also our partners in the Indo-Pacific, uh, Japan for example, and the Republic of Korea. I'm sure that when it comes to defense, when it comes to um, foreign policy, uh, that Germany will be able to conduct uh, his, its foreign policy, uh, fulfill its obligations in terms of defense, etc. So I'm not worried about that. Olaf Scholz is a strong leader. I know him very well. So I think he will navigate during the coming months, making sure that uh, Germany plays its role at the world stage. Thank you. We have to work not only uh, the threat of Russia, uh, but also the fact that these four countries work together and that now uh, very soon we will see that also the US itself is under threat from these newest technological developments, thanks to Russia giving its um, latest insights and technology to the North Korea. Russia is delivering the latest technology uh, into uh, North Korea in return for North Korean help with the war against uh, Ukraine. And this is a threat not only to the European part of NATO, but also to the US mainland. And that means that the Indo-Pacific and the euro atlantic but particularly also within NATO, US, Canada, and the European part of NATO, we have to work together. He's right Stay here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning.